I, I moved to Huntington, West Virginia. Uh, I went to Marshall University in college to play football uh, on partial scholarship. And uh, like most kids, that was my first taste of complete freedom. I mean, I didn't have a mom and a dad tell me when to eat, when not to eat, and when to sleep, and where to go, and where not to go, what not to do. I mean, it was, I was my own man, and I thought I knew it all. And, um, with that freedom, I, I made a lot of uh, bad decisions. I began, you know, like every kid in college, uh, drinking socially with friends. And that drinking um, at uh, parties on the weekends turned into drinking at bars on the weekends. And that weekend bar drinking turned into weekday bar drinking. And pretty soon I was by myself with no crowds at all, just drinking at my apartment by myself. And um, I had to get up in the mornings. At times it got so bad that first few years that I would drink in the morning just before I could even get up and go to class to start my day. And, uh, I, I thought that uh, I was not an alcoholic, which I was, because I was like, this is college. This is what everybody does. This is what you're supposed to do. Go to college and have a blast. Your parents aren't here to get on. Well, unfortunately, those bad, bad decisions turned into more bad decisions. And I began to have uh, some interaction with law enforcement that I'm not proud of. Um, you know, I, I, I've been arrested several times for different things. Uh, a lot of things I'm not going to go into. My kids are here. but. Uh, I was in a dark place, guys. I was I was in a bad place, and um, you know the feeling of, of freedom and excitement and fun turned into a feeling of loneliness and depression and sadness. And I had a void and a need that I couldn't feel. No matter where I looked, no matter what I did, I, I, I couldn't feel that void. I knew something was wrong. Something was the matter. And no matter what I did to try and and feel that it, 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 it didn't matter. I, I couldn't I couldn't find what I was looking for, so I just got deeper and deeper into sin. Uh, began to miss the practice, almost lost the scholarship. My grades began to fail. Um, I began to get in more and more trouble. Uh, luckily, I got pulled over drinking and driving, which is something I never thought I would do. And the cop found out I played ball, and he let me he let me off. But he told me if he ever saw me again, you know, there would be no more second chances. But Things just, you know, started going downhill from there. In my second year of college, I came home for Christmas, and uh, a lot of you know Michael Bruggi, my uncle. I want to tell you what kind of person I was. He, he, he saw the path that I was leading. He saw the things that I was doing, the life I was living, and he saw himself those same years, the same age that I was, doing those same things before God saved him. And he, uh, he wrote me a seven-page letter. And he said God laid it on his heart, and uh, it was front and back, like 14 pages. Um, he, uh, he wrote to me a letter and put it in a Bible, a new Bible, and he put $50 in it. Well, I'm embarrassed to say I took that $50, I put it in my pocket, I didn't even read the letter, and I, I put it in the Bible, and I tossed the Bible to the side. If I didn't want to hear anything anybody had to say to me, I thought I knew it all. And uh, luckily I got a praying mom that's here tonight. Uh, she took my, uh, she would pack my stuff for me when I would come into Beckley. And she took that Bible and that letter and she put it in my stuff and I didn't know. And uh, I, one night, you know, God was dealing with me. Uh, I, was, I was in a bad way and I was, um, I was sitting in my room and I was crying and I was just, I was lost. I had anxiety. I didn't know where it come from. I didn't know what was going on. And I, 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 I sat in my room and I leaned against a bookshelf, guys. This is two years. This is two years after the fact that Mike could give me that that Bible and that letter and I leaned against that bookshelf and it was like something out of a movie. That Bible fell from the top of my bookshelf and it was covered in dust and I wiped the dust off of it and uh, and that letter fell out and I, I took time to actually read that letter and that was, I didn't, and maybe at the time he gave it to me, maybe God knew that wasn't the time for me but he knew I was going to need to hear the things that was in that letter later on in my life and I, I'd read that letter probably ten times over and over and uh I called my mom at 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I said, uh, you know, I want to give my life to God. Everything that Michael went through, I've went through. Everything that he was looking for, he found in Jesus, and I want that same feeling. I want the feeling that I saw my mom and dad grow up with, the peace that they had in life. We didn't have much, you know, but we never, we never really wanted for anything. But, you know, God always provided. He always made a way where there seemed to be no way. And my mom made sure that we knew that it was God that provided those things. So, um, anyway, um, sorry guys, getting ahead of myself here. But he, uh, that night, when I prayed with my mom, you know, she, she gave me some scriptures to stand on, and 
And I, pr I think Mama, we probably prayed for three or four hours that night, just talking all night long. And uh, he changed my life to a point I can't explain to you. Has everything been perfect since then? Absolutely not. But he took that addiction, <coughs> that desire that I had, those shakes that I had. <coughs> he took that from me. And I no longer wanted to please myself. I wanted to please him. I lost a lot of friends. I lost pretty much everybody at that time. They thought I went crazy. They thought I was going through a, a, a crisis or something. But... Um, those weren't my real friends, and I found that out soon, and I, I, I found myself alone, but I've never been so happy, and uh, I was just I was just going around all over Huntington trying to find a church to visit, and when I got home, uh, I started going down here to Lego with my mom and dad, and I grew up in that church, but I was no longer in the back, you know, a kid trying to fall asleep in the back, you know, and hide from my parents. I was actually uh, worshiping God and, and paying attention to what uh, Ray Stewart and Butch White and all these pastors were bringing, and, you know, uh, I wanted to leave something with you. Uh, Sister Brenda Burns, I don't know if she's here tonight, but uh, I still hadn't learned how to pray. And I was, uh, my brothers was in Florida. I just graduated, and they were like, you know, they, they own an advertising agency. They want me to come work for them. And uh, I had just gotten to church. I was just starting to learn. Everything was new to me. Every testimony was new. Every scripture that was brought out in church was new. And I was, I was eating it all up. I was so excited. And I was growing. I felt like I was growing in God, but... I needed money. I needed a job. I needed. I wanted to have a wife and kids, and you know, get on with my life and, and do a lot of things. And so, I was offered a really good job in Florida, and I, I turned that down because that night in church, um, I sat in the back. I'd been gone for four years. I hadn't talked to some of these people in four years. Some of these ladies that I grew up seeing in church, and Sister Brenda Burgess was out in the parking lot, and I, I, I during the church service, I had asked uh, God. I said, Lord. I just need a simple answer. Should I go or should I stay? Should I go or should I stay? And I didn't know how it worked. You know, I was waiting for somebody to come lay their hands on me and give me this glorious answer from God. And the whole service went by two hours. Nobody laid hands on me, which is which is not that normal if you've ever been to Lego. Uh, whether you're a believer or not, you're going to get a hand laid on you. But uh, nobody came to me. No, I didn't get any answers. So I was I was uh, down and out and, and uh, feeling like, you know, maybe, maybe I'm doing something wrong. And church was out, dismissed. People were in their cars leaving. And I went out in the parking lot, and Sister Brenda Burgess was out in the parking lot praying for people. And this was something I had I had told God in my head. I didn't even say it audibly, you know, should I go or should I stay? She had her eyes closed, and she laid her hands on my chest, and she said, Kelly, God told me to tell you to stay. He said, don't go. Don't go. In time, he'll provide all your needs. Just trust in him and obey him. And my knees got weak because there's nobody here that could tell me that that wasn't God. There's no way she could have known what I was, what I was speaking, the exact words I was speaking to God. And I, I'd been gone for four years, and had nobody knew my, my life situation and what was going on with me. So anyway, I, I obeyed, and I did exactly what he said. I, I just stayed, and I, even though I didn't have a job and didn't know what to do, I told my brothers I was sorry. I was going to obey God and try to stay home. They thought I was just kind of losing it too. But anyway, um, here I am, 42 years old. Um, I've got a beautiful wife, a God-fearing wife. She does everything for me. She's been through with me through thick and thin. And, I've got three beautiful, healthy children. I've got a great job. I'm only 42 years old, and I'll be retired in eight years from the federal prison. I could have ended up in the prison. I could have been one of the inmates. I could have yeah. killed a family out driving drunk. I could have killed an innocent person. I could have killed myself. I, I could be in jail for who knows how many DUIs. And, you know, I just thank God because he had a plan for me, and I, I know he has a plan for you. I tried everything there was to try, and Jesus was was the only thing that filled that, filled that void. He was the only thing that worked for me. I trusted him, and I ask that you trust him. If you uh, have never thought about accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I, I don't just ask, I plead with you to consider it tonight. Me or one of the ministers here tonight will pray with you um, after we eat, after we get down here. I'll, take, I'll talk to you to the side. There's so much I put in here I wanted to say, but I got nervous. I didn't, I didn't want to sit up here and read a paper. I just wanted you to know that God saved me. He saved me from the devil's hell. There is, a, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Yeah, and I've got a few scriptures I wanted to leave with you. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, Romans 10 and 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Luke 19 and 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He's seeking you today. There's a reason that every one of us is here right now together, I believe. 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
I uh, just hope that you'll uh, consider him tonight. And thank you for listening to me. I hope I didn't rattle on you. <coughs> yeah, I